how we might be able to use some of the health promotion as an approach to build our family, our fun, our capacity uh, as we are facing the COVID-19 and beyond. So I will uh, hand it over to Sonia Tuitahi. And uh, throughout the session, you may use the chat to post any comments or questions. At the end of the session, which we, we, we like to say maybe in 40 minutes of talk, 40, 45 minutes, and then the rest of the time, we'll be able to entertain some of those questions. Some questions that we might not be able to answer today, we're happy to um, relay it to you back through our email. And of course, if you have the opportunity to look at our website, you'll have a lot more information, including the webinar that we have had before and a few more to come. So once again, welcome all of, all of you. And I um, ask you to please uh, welcome Sione Tuitahi uh, to our webinar this morning. Malo apito. Thank you, Uriami, and thank you for your karakia, setting the right tone and the right spirit, especially at this time of uh, COVID-19, and especially for me when I um, give a talk using technology. One of the reasons for being a bit nervous about this whole thing is learning how to master the uh, technology. And maybe I will apologize right from the outset to our participants if there are hiccups uh, along the way. Uh, one point though for the admin um, in the background there, Emma Frost is our IT for this morning. Emma, you can switch on your recording button if you haven't. It's all good now, um, so it's wonderful. But it's my pleasure to uh, present on this topic and um, I'm very grateful that you take up uh, part of your very busy schedule to be with uh, us here at Health Promotion Forum this morning. Our team, still working from home, Briami has welcomed you from the, the uh, lounge of his, his working space at home, and so am I, I'm talking to you uh, from home. I, we are both in Auckland. Emma is uh, from the West in Auckland, uh, looking after the techni uh, technical side of things there, and we hope that everything will go well. So. The topic is um, health promoting ways of uh, building family and final capacity against COVID-19 and beyond. And I'd like to put the emphasis on the beyond. You know, although the aim is to build our family, our final capacity, that is we as health promoters to help our family, our final build that capacity against this pandemic uh, those are skills and competencies that they can actually continue to use and apply to their family situation as we come out of COVID-19 and for a longer uh, term. So that's the idea of selecting this uh, topic of um, health-promoting ways of building family and on our capacity. And basically using the World Health Organization uh, tool, the Ottawa Charter and I'll elaborate on that uh, a bit later on. Uh, but for today, we have, uh, I have uh, four major points to share with you. The first one is our social evolution uh, as humanity from the family and tribe situation through to the city state and the nation state. And now we are into the planetary era. We will explore that a bit. The second point we will look at is uh, the Ottawa Charter and help promotion in this epoch of the Anthropocene. The third point that we will look at is help promotion with an eco-social approach and planetary consciousness. It's a new understanding of how we apply help promotion as a professional field and professional practice and a discipline um, incorporating an eco-social approach and planetary consciousness. And the fourth and last point will be how to adapt and apply the Ottawa Charter to the Fano and family level. This is very much a first attempt by the Health Promotion Forum to take uh, the Ottawa Charter, a global and national tool, and an organizational tool for that matter, largely used by the professional uh, workforce, uh, those of us who are health promoters, public health workers, and uh, 
other related fields that we have uh, employed the Ottawa Charter as a tool in our practice. Uh, two learning outcomes for today. One is that as a result of this webinar, you will be able to understand how to adapt the Ottawa Charter, of course, to a family level. And uh, the second one is how to practice health promotion with an eco social approach and planetary uh, consciousness. So now let's deal with those points one by one. But, but first and foremost, it's very clear COVID 19 has hit home the message and our reality that we are a one world, one people, one health. And I decided to put up those two uh, lovely pictures. Uh, the top one, uh, at the very top, uh, is our um, global far now. They are the members of the global executive board of the International Union for Health Promotion and Education. Uh, the headquarters in Paris, the International Secretariat is in uh, Montreal, uh, and uh, we work with them um, at a global level on a number of fronts, uh, developing a number of uh, frameworks and tools that are applicable around the world, including uh, New Zealand. But that's a topic for another webinar. Uh, Trevor Simpson, our Deputy Executive Director, is a member of the board, and so am I. Trevor is uh, the back row there uh, to the left, and myself back row uh, to the right. The um, forefront picture is uh, our small team, uh, our family. Uh, we are open based, but uh, we are very diverse. You look at the background of Asian, Indian, uh, Pacific, um, Tongan, uh, along with Riyami, Trevor Simpson is uh, Tuhoi. Uh, of course, Lavinia is from Fiji, but also of Scottish background. So we are a microcosm of the world. We are a small United Nations family. And so is it, uh, our global family, the IHVE team that we uh, work with. The first component that I'd like to explore briefly is our social evolution as humanity. And this is quite significant to understand the new context uh, upon which we operate as health promoters and other professional health workers. You know, we have come a long way from thousands of years, from the family and tribal uh, stage onto the city state, and then the empire or the nation state. And we are actually moving more and more to the planetary stage. You know, one world, one people, with all our diversity, which is beautiful, and it's a strength that we should embrace, um, and also, um, uh, we are in a one common home, planet Earth. And COVID-19 has made it very clear how global, how interconnected we are. And leadership, um, as um, the uh, Director General of the WHO, Dr. Tedros, you know, uh, says, only together can we get through this pandemic in national unity and global solidarity. And so good governance and leadership is key to our ability to counter any global, national or local uh, challenges uh, to our health and well-being. Last year, we, we held a world conference on health promotion with our uh, international counterpart, the uh, IUHBE, uh, International Union of Promotion and Education. And uh, the World Conference was held in Rotorua. And Professor Fran Baum from uh, Australia commended the leadership that she witnessed in the country then, one year ago. And this was after the March 19th uh, incident in the South Island. And uh, I thought that I'd share this with you to see how great leaders in public health and community development and health promotion around the world have noted early on the good governance and the good leadership that is in our country. As you know, we've been able to beat COVID-19. We are very uh, fortunate, one of a few countries who've been able to do that. And I wonder what Brent Baum would say about 
the leadership in the country at the moment. Uh, we continue to support and uh, those great work that we have witnessed, not just the leadership of the health sector, but also across the board. Um, another leader in health promotion and uh, social determinants of health is, uh, say, Michael Marmot uh, from uh, England, as many of you uh, know, you're familiar with his work. One of his leading piece of uh, research and project was the 2008 uh, report as chair of the WHO uh, Commission for the Social Determinants of Health. We were very uh, privileged to have uh, Sam Mahmoud to speak at our conference. And I noted how he commented last year that the approach that we take, not just to the budget of the country, our economic and uh, financial well-being, but also broadly as a framework of health and well-being. Um, health promotion equally validates social determinants of health and uh, the ecological determinants of health. But so far, the, the emphasis has been very much on the social determinants. And while we respect the works of the likes of Sam Ahmed, it's timely that we bring up uh, the other dimensions, uh, other determinants of health, especially ecological determinants of health, because of not just COVID-19, but the other planetary challenges that we are facing in the world uh, today. So that leads us to the Anthropocene. Uh, and um, as our friend and colleague, Professor Trevor Hancock from Canada, said at the same conference last year, people are asking around, who is Mr. Anthropos? And who are the Anthropos? You know, and he himself answered his questions. Uh, we are the Anthropos. You know, we are the Anthropos. We created this age of the Anthropocene. And simply it means for the first time in the biological, uh, geological, social evolution of humanity, uh, humanity has made its impact, you know, its, uh, its eco footprints on planet Earth in a way that's very clear. Planet Earth, Mother Earth, is no longer able to look after its children and sustain herself at the same time. And uh, scientists have uh, pinpointed 1950 as the beginning of the age or the epoch of the Anthropocene. And before that, of course, was the uh, epoch of the Holocene, uh, meaning plants and animals were the dominant species in the world and we homo sapiens were a minority, you know, in the big scheme of things, and we did not really make an impact. But then by 1950, it's very clear that the planet Earth was at a point, turning point of not being able to sustain itself. And as you know, the acceleration of that negative process is quite uh, fast, and later on we'll look at some of the reports on that, and hence the concern around the world uh, to look after Mother Earth and to have a planetary approach, uh, an eco-social approach to uh, health, health emotion, health and, and well-being. I mentioned before that um, in the Ottawa Charter, uh, there was equal attention to social determinants and ecological determinants. As you can see, uh, the eight prerequisites the eight prerequisites for health uh, include a stable ecosystem and sustainable resources. And as most, if not all of you are aware of, the second uh, action uh, area of the five action areas of the Ottawa Charter, you know, after building public health policy, the second um, strategic area is um, supporting, creating supportive environments. And so while it is recognized and equally important, we have not paid much attention to that. Uh, by the way, I have given uh, some of the links 
through the talks at the conference last year by Professor Hancock and by St. Michael Mahmoud down there, so that you can, um, and I invite you to have a look at the, our YouTube channel and you can certainly benefit uh, from the um, talks of uh, these experts in their respective fields. Uh, and it's part of our ongoing uh, learning. Uh, but again, anthrop the Anthropocene is a geological phenomenon, an ecological uh, phenomenon as well. And it's a human phenomenon because we, uh, the Homo sapiens and the Anthropos, we human beings are the ones who are actually causing the damage you know, to our mother earth. That leads us to this new emerging field of planetary health. Uh, the uh, Landsat uh, report, uh, 2015, is a landmark uh, development. And they define planetary health, the health of human civilization, and the natural system on which it uh, depends. So if when we look back, we see that the human population is healthier than ever before. Life expectancy rising up, poverty going down, and so is child uh, mortality. But we have achieved it at a high cost. And you can see the details on the uh, diagram on the right there, uh, acknowledging the source. It's the Lancet Commission's uh, report. It was published in 2019 at a very high cost to Mala Air. Uh, our ability to look after ourselves and not uh, the planet. And here are some details. You can, uh, we will share this uh, PowerPoint uh, with you in a form of a PDF. And you can take your time to look through the details that uh, I share here. And there's the link uh, as well you know, with you. So we have slightly covered uh, our social um, evolution from the family to the planetary stage. We have touched on the Anthropocene. Uh, we have covered to some degree the um, uh, what planetary health is. And um, a final word on planetary health. One of uh, the experts on this uh, new emerging field, Professor Tony Tecon, uh, one of our uh, friends and colleagues who also spoke at the conference last year, and again a link to his talk at the conference. He outlined very clearly uh, what the discipline of planetary health is trying to achieve. And uh, three recommendations uh, from his talk, which the health promotion agrees with, is that one, health promotion in the Anthropocene should be intergenerational, you know, addressing health equity not just our generation, but the generation of our uh, children and the children of our children. You know, if I take that to a personal uh, level, uh, this morning, my um, nine-year-old granddaughter um, um, sent me a message on WhatsApp and said, Grandpa, I'm going to school and I, I love you, sending me three hearts. And then I replied to her, uh, I hope yesterday was good and I hope you're healthy. And she said, yes, it was great fun. M met my teacher and all my friends. And I'm okay, I'm fine, grandpa. And so for me, doing this kind of work, it's not just a professional approach, it's also personal. You know, my concern for the well-being of my grandchildren and their children, of course. And so it's the kind of uh, professional and personal attitude and values that we need to take uh, on board uh, and apply in our work with the community, policy level, national level, international level. Uh, perhaps a new generation, a new country of health promoters around the world who understand what the Ottawa Charter is, but now also understand the Anthropocene, uh, understand planetary health, and to incorporate through their mind and heart uh, an echo social approach, which means to recognize eagerly the ecological, the economic, and the social foundations of health. In simple terms, it means in every day of our life, whatever activities we do or tend to, 
you know, it's, it, all these things affect our health and they are the foundations of our health from the family to the village, to the nation and to the planetary uh, level. And last but not least, uh, Tony, his third, third uh, point, emphasize the role of indigenous knowledge and local knowledge. Um, this is nothing new to us in Aotearoa, uh, you know, for eons, Tangata Fenua and Tangata Mwana Nui Akiwa, you know, Pacific peoples, indigenous knowledge was their main source of, of knowledge. So uh, knowledge systems around the world, we have reached a planetary level, a global village, and every system of knowledge has a contribution to make to our collective pool of um, knowledge systems and wisdom and for the sake of our health and well-being. Um, in the panel that we sent out for this webinar, uh, we invited you to uh, read the legacy statements that was uh, issued out from the World uh, Conference on Health Promotion last year that was held in Motorua. There were two of them. Uh, one is the Waiora Indigenous People Statement, and the other one was the Hawora uh, Statement. And the two, you have to study them together, as some of you might have found. And there were calls from the conference using these two legacy statements to the global community, the nations and leaders, to address the well-being of the planet, but also to uh, consider um, indigenous knowledge as part of uh, and partial of uh, the solutions that we uh, offer to the world through the framework of uh, health promotion. Yes, as I mentioned before, we have reached a point of our evolution, uh, social evolution that is, as uh, homo sapiens, that we are a global village and while the uh, systems of knowledge of the West, as you can see from the uh, circle there, is the dominant and the biggest um, body of knowledge that we look to. Um, other knowledge systems are equally important. The knowledge of the East, the knowledge of the um, of indigenous, indigenous peoples, as well as um, the spiritual dimension of knowledge. Uh, indigenous peoples around the world is something like 300 to 400 uh, million of them, depending on who's counting. Uh, the spiritual dimension of well-being is central you know, to their worldview, to their cosmology and the way they understand life and, and well-being. And again, as I said, they all make uh, equally important contributions uh, to uh, our health and well-being especially in areas like social ecological um, determinants and planetary health. Just uh, an example of the richness of uh, indigenous knowledge here in our motto, in our country, uh, Aotearoa, New Zealand, uh, one of the leaders in public health and health promotion and Maori development for that matter, Sam Mason Dury, uh, uh, a leader that Health Promotion Forum always looks to for guidance and for collaboration. Uh, he spoke uh, at the conference as well, and he presented, among other gems of wisdom, uh, Matariki as a new um, uh, tool, uh, uh, model for Health Promotion. Uh, in addition to Kepai Maltonga, uh, which he, was give, he gave to the workforce some uh, 20, 21 years ago. 1999. Uh, as you can see, um, indigenous knowledge uh, has been kind of ahead, you know, understanding the land, the Fenua, but also understanding the planet. That's seen in the works of the likes of Sam and Guri. You know, we look beyond the earth, we look up to the stars, we look to the cosmos, as he has done with the uh, Mahatoma. Uh, a cluster of stars that were instrumental for the uh, discovery of New Zealand and other indigenous peoples in the Pacific are familiar with, but also Matariki, other indigenous peoples of the Pacific are aware of that. And the, um, again, the significance of indigenous knowledge, 
contributing to our basket of knowledge to help us in our health motion work, in other words. Here's a list of some of the Pacifica models uh, in the health and education sector. Onuaola is a model that I introduced to the workforce in 2007, and we revamped me and Biryani and others, revamped that uh, two years ago or uh, three and a half years ago. Um, and again, the richness of uh, the contributions of other uh, knowledge systems. So, um, health promotion for today. The Ottawa Charter was the, the first global uh, framework model, you know, given to us, of course, by the WHO, 1986. Uh, but there were other frameworks, other models given um, by WHO. And one of the landmark ones was the Bangkok Charter, 2007. There was an attempt to um, embrace the, you know, the commercial sector uh, and to frame the activities in a health promotion way and to acknowledge the impact the commercial sector is making on the health and well-being of society and also to recognize that we are increasingly becoming a globalized uh, community, a globalized uh, society. Uh, the emblem of the, the logo of the uh, Ottawa Charter with the uh, five uh, action areas and the three major strategies of um, advocacy, enabling, and uh, mediating. Uh, just to remind us of uh, what we are talking about. Again, an emphasis of uh, the need for us to find a balance between social determinants, you know, the activities of humans, but also ecological determinants. The, um, the impact of the environment, whether it's healthy or unhealthy, on our life, and our health, and our well being as humanity. But also to understand that the family can be a foundation for health and well being. So that brings us to the, um, the gist and the, the core of our conversation, our Talanoa and our Corridor this morning, how we can adapt. Uh, the Ottawa Charter to the family um, and uh, how it might be applied and be offered to them as a tool. So the thinking here of the Health Motion Forum that while the Ottawa Charter is a familiar tool to us, there's, um, there's a lot to be gained if we share those same tools with our communities. And our Iwi, our Hapu, our, our Whanau, uh, for indigenous peoples, as we learn here from uh, Amada Fenua, um, it's nothing new sharing knowledge, professional and personal, uh, with the Fana, with the family. As uh, many of you know, uh, Samis and Guri and others uh, developed Fana Water, and it is an effective framework and tool that's applied throughout the country. Uh, there was another tool developed for the family. Uh, health and uh, healthy families in New Zealand. It was an initiative some years back that was uh, launched by the Ministry of Health. In the Pacific community, uh, they see the church as a um, first, lines of, first line of defense for health and well being. And they see the fauna and family as actually uh, not only the foundation, but the first house of well being, first house of mental health, first house of spiritual. Uh, prosperity, this house of economic uh, uh, well-being, and the foundation for everything. And they are the first promoters of the well-being of the ecology. Some of, uh, well, most of the photos as from now on are personal. Uh, these are members of my family and uh, grateful for them for allowing me to uh, use these family uh, photos to illustrate uh, this conversation with you. Let me uh, really just check the time so I can make sure. 20 minutes already, so I have 10 more minutes to go. So basically what we have done in our team is to take the three major strategies of the Ottawa Charter, 
that is to advocate, enable, and to mediate for the well-being of society. And um, frame that as a plan that has six areas of focus for the family. And then the uh, five action areas of the Otawa Charter, and that is create, um, um, build healthy public policies. We reword that to say, create healthy family rules or family policies. And you can reword this to your like and to suit your engagement with your target audience. Create supportive environment, uh, community action. We say family action in, in many cultures. The family is actually the community. You bring together 20 families and you have final, you have the hapu. You know, you bring together more of those um, uh, hapu and you have the iwi. Same thing in Tonga, same thing in Samoa and PNG. Um, and it's the same thing throughout the indigenous wells in, in the Moana, in the Pacific, as we witness here in New Zealand. And the fifth one is to develop personal uh, skills, you know, that's um, knowledge, education, and values. And the final one is how we can reorient the health services to meet uh, the needs of our community. But we have adapted all of those uh, five strategies and the three, sorry, the four of those five action areas and the three major strategies of the Odawa Charter to become a, a plan for the family uh, to use to fight COVID-19 and to um, develop their skills beyond uh, COVID-19. As I said earlier, we see the family as the foundation, the first line of defense, the first in everything. And um, we have not paid enough attention to the agency and the capacity and the potentialities of the family to be able to lead themselves, look after themselves, and to help others, uh, other families and the rest of the community. In the end, at the end of the day, this is actually what health promotion is. It's in the process of enabling peoples and communities to take greater control of their health and well-being, especially the underlying causes of um, their health and well-being. And so here we are, um, our goal one, be able to advocate and enable and mediate within your family and find out uh, to put together a plan. If you already have a plan, perhaps you advocate to implement. And if you are already in the implementation phase, especially Fana who are uh, familiar with Fana Wara, with Enuaola, with Lotumoui, who have been involved in programs and initiatives and projects from us, the health promoters, the health promotion workforce, and health promotion providers and other social services and health services who are engaged in community level initiatives like this. You know, they have been advocating, they have been enabling, and they have been mediating between church and community leaders, between many farmers and many generations as well. So they are familiar with these tools, and it's our professional and personal experience also in the Health Promotion Forum that many of these things that we are talking about in the Art on our Charter are actually being practiced by um, members of Paranao and families, although they do not call it that way. And so to work with them, sharing these tools, uh, it's actually just recognizing what they are already doing. And so the first, um, the second goal, and this is the first uh, action area in the our charter, create healthy family policy or guidelines. And that is just about ensuring that all guidelines and decisions under your plan, your family plan, is healthy for the family. I won't go into details on this because you are familiar with all of these uh, five action strands or areas of the of our charter. Um, so moving along to the next one, create a supportive environment. And when we say environment here, we do not refer just to the social environment, 
you know, or whether it's the workplace or home, family, or um, school, you know, school setting. We also refer here to the to the natural uh, environment, and these are activities that we recommend. You know, ensuring that your home is safe and healthy, ensuring that your bubble is peaceful and violence free. But you as a health promoter can work with your community, work with the families that you are working with. And given this opportunity that COVID-19 has created this situation, enabling us to reach directly you know, to uh, family, um, you can adapt, set up the lines of actions to suit the need of the families that you uh, work with, as long as you know they are informed by the principles and the thinking uh, and the, our experience applying the Ottawa Charter. Um, as you know, this um, this uh, fourth uh, goal it's an adaptation of community action, community uh, development. The Ottawa Charter. Um, we, we, of course, adapted to say family actions for your family's well-being and for other families too. Just a bit of history on this one. This is a direct um, Aotearoa New Zealand contribution to the Ottawa Charter, 1986. One of our colleagues, one of our valued uh, friends, uh, uh, John Rayburn, uh, Professor uh, John Rayburn contributed this to the Ottawa Charter. Uh, John was very fortunate to have been invited to Canada, working there at the time. He participated in the uh, conference, the landmark conference in 1986, and he contributed this um, action uh, strand to the formation of the Ottawa uh, Charter. We are blessed that John uh, is still advising us, supporting us uh, in our work. But it's about actions that your community, in this case, your family can do. You know, firstly, for the well-being of your fa of the family, walking together, gardening together. Uh, Riyami is a veteran uh, gardener, and so am I. <laughs> Learning a lot uh, from Riyami. You know, creating spaces uh, for family to come together on a more regular basis, update each other on how they progress with COVID-19, equally if not more important, how they plan to work together and collaborate and work together into their future, a future of well-being. As you know, uh, we can do two things. It's a choice. You can just walk into the future, a future that others might create for you and you might not like it. The other option is that you can create your own future. Our health promotion forum experience at both professional and uh, personal level we find that it's those families who have set their own goals, decide what future they want to walk into, and they walk into it. And this phenomenon is consistent in the Pacific community, you know, the Tanaka uh, uh, the Kiwis, European background, and all the, across the board. So it's when Panau and families uh, take charge of their health, their well being, their future, and you can see they can actually walk into the a future that is healthy, wealthy, and they are happy with. Actions like using social media, you know, uh, two months ago, who would have thought that I will be having this webinar with you out there in your homes, in the workplace, around the country. Uh, we used to just run our workshops with up to a number of, max of 20 people. But thanks to technology, and we are all learning. And so these are the kind of actions that families can uh, come up with and do uh, to help themselves and be able to help others. Uh, developing personal skills, you know, the COVID-19 period is a time to develop our own capacity, our own knowledge, how to use technology, how to use social media, how to plan, how to support others and how we can um, um, help with the community. And uh, last but not least, how we can reorient services to meet our own needs. 
suddenly there will be an official uh, or more than just one evaluation of our journey through COVID-19. But families and far now have got a, by now, a rich experience of going through at a family level. And it's worth reflecting and sharing that. And we as uh, Fanaora navigators, health promoters, community workers, other health workers, can actually work with our community at the family level to share their experience and share that with the service providers that they in direct contact with, even to the ministerial level. The Health Promotion Forum would be happy to receive any feedback from you. Uh, I think we have a, an open forum uh, tomorrow. Emma, if you can um, correct me, uh, where members of the forum and others can have a, a conversation with us and we share our experience. And we can feed that back to the services to help them um, uh, reshape you know, their service to make it better. You know, more importantly, as you know, the essence of this uh, strategy area in the Ottawa Charter, it's about making services more relevant, uh, more accessible, more culturally appropriate and suitable and professionally too, to its clients. And another component of this is to en ensure that services begin to move from treating and curing after the illness and, and um, an incident to a health emotion preventative uh, approach. And we see that in the last 20, 30 years or so here in the zone, how we see um, mainstream services beginning to move out to communities, setting up community health uh, social services. Uh, the scene with the Pacifica community over the last two decades, we have seen the growth of a number of strong, uh, effective Pacific providers. Before that, there was uh, very little, if not none at all. And similarly, over the last two decades, we see uh, a similar development among the Tata Penua uh, providers. So it's about reorienting the health sector. And I think in this case, we are recommending it's not just the health sector, I think uh, all sectors need to reconsider the values that drive them, the uh, institutions that are in place, and the services that they are provide, and the practices, the way they approach to the health and well-being of partner and family, to be more suitable, to be more preventative and promotional, rather than the bottom of the cliff, you know, as they say. You know, this is not to say that it's only about public health and health promotion and prevention and promotion. It's about understanding the full uh, breadth and length of the continuum of, um, of health and care. So it's promotion, prevention, and end to treatment. And those aspects all have their role uh, to play in a complementary way. I mean, I'm conscious that I'm running out of time. Um, yes. I'll skip this one and I'll say, thank you very much for your time. You can ask uh, questions and thank you for participating. Uh, just that last uh, photo there, we'll uh, share our uh, copy of this if you request it. And um, we thank also to our board of the Health Motion Forum, their leadership and their guidance in our work. Uh, again, thank you very much, uh, everybody and I'll hand it over to William. If there are hard questions, I will give it back to him to help with uh, fielding the questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you Sione, and thank you, everybody. And I think this is a, a, a really, um, of course, very important topic and uh, very wide. And Sione is trying his best to cover from um, prehistoric time um, up to, to the time where we are now. But, but uh, very, um, just, uh, I think one point that came out from the audience here 
they they are suggesting that maybe I think it was Susan who say maybe we should have an annual lockdown period because of the benefit that we have, and I think Kerry and um, Kate were also agreeing asking what can we do to maintain the benefit that we have uh, had because of the lockdown. Uh, you know, we hear the birds singing, we are able to walk, and there is clean air, um, and, and all those uh, benefits that uh, come out of the COVID-19 lockdown. And I think maybe that's some of the, of the idea of what, Siona, uh, I put it to you, they say, uh, what can we do to continue uh, benefiting from what we have seen as, an, as the result of the lockdown? Being the environment, being, uh, you know, allowing time to breathe and be more active. Yeah, I mean, that's a very, that's the, the billion dollar question. Uh, it's a big question and it's very, uh, very important. Uh, I myself, um, I've been trying to reflect uh, on this. Um, I think the COVID-19 has uh, given us a space to uh, reflect, uh, but also to realize that the direction that we are heading to is unsustainable and it will be uh, uh, for the harm of all if we continue that direction. So for me, that's one lesson to learn. Two, we need to revisit our own values, both personal and professional, because those values underpin the way we understand the world and therefore the way we uh, set our goals and set up institutions in societies from the global, national, local and family level, you know, to deliver us what we want. And uh, so therefore for me, it's about revisiting our values. And I think I have mentioned some of those values. You know, the, the values of uh, a planetary consciousness to understand that, that our personal life, our professional life, um, all those things impact on the health of the planet. Yeah. Okay. I, I think so, Sione, and, and I, there are more people coming on the chat now saying, yeah, let's have an annual lockdown. Uh, I think that's that's not a joke, actually. I think we maybe we can uh, begin a movement whereby we can, um, you know, uh, suggest this to be a, a policy uh, where the, everyone will have a lockdown. Because the thing is, everybody has to do it together um, in order we get the, the benefit that we're having now. But let me just show you briefly what I have done with my own family, a sort of a little family um, um, uh, program ourselves. We have had this, I'm from Tonga, of course, and we moved there and we live in New Caledonia for about 10 years. And um, we had this WWW, Walk to Work on Wednesdays. And, um, and, and where we cannot uh, not use the car, we, I mean, wherever possible, on every Wednesday, every, you know, the children walk to school, I walk to work and, 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 and so forth. What I'm suggesting here, as, um, as Sione was been trying to do for us as our own far now, our own family to, to develop our own family plan. While we are waiting for a more national ruling so that we have a lockdown, um, I myself here, and I I'm, I'm, have discussed with my family, my children are not very keen to it, but we, we are discussing that we should do that again on every Wednesday as our contribute to the, to the world um, clean air, that we all do not use our own vehicle. No driving, uh, we can use the, we can walk, or otherwise we use the public transport. I think just, just a little bit of something that, uh, that I suggest, and I, I'm sure, and I see a lot of people here are very keen on, on doing that. So before we, we close, because I, I know the time is, is running out, but there was another question I think it came out as to where can they get the more information about planetary health? I know you referred to, uh, to our website, but uh, as a reference, can you uh, just uh, tell them where can they have 
more information about planetary health. Uh, of course, the internet, you know, they have resources there, you know, our website um, too, and our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, but I think in those slides, I'll go back to those. In those slides where I talk about planetary health and the works of uh, the likes of uh, Trevor uh, Hancock and um, Tony Capone, I um, put there the link to the Lancet uh, Commission report on planetary health. I think that's a very good start uh, for um, there you are. Uh, that's like uh, uh, there is not only a, a journal that is free, by the way. Uh, people can go there and, and you know, download the information. And I think that's a, a good uh, starting point. Yeah. Um, and, and I think because Emma already uh, are sharing that we will be happy to uh, give the, the presentation to, to people, all the participants, um, and it will be available in our website. So they will be able to have those uh, references. Um, I, I, I think we are coming to, to closing this, um, this session here. And once again, I want to thank you, thanks to our speaker, uh, Sione for all this um, a very rich uh, talk and reflection, and uh, not only on the trend of how we have evolved uh, as human beings, starting from the cultural and industrial revolution and become the center of the universe, and uh, we use and abuse the environment and everything else because we're just so focused on us as being human. And then we came on from there to the fact that we uh, uh, focus everything that we do on, on our problem. And the problem was, uh, you know, either it's the individual or, or community and they were looking, you know, thus we plan our system of health system focusing on this is very negative approach. And then we realized that actually it's not just our individual behavior, but it's our environment, meaning our social, economic um, environment, cultural, and all those things are, are, are important. And, and as human, we are not like machine. We have feeling, we have value, we have culture. And those factors actually affect and determine how we behave and, and, and react and interact. And therefore, uh, that's the time when we embrace the social determinants as, as important to looking after ourselves. And, 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 but we continue to be so focused on ourselves and continue to misuse the environment, uh, even the animals and plants and everything. And thus, we see the consequences of that one where we arrive at the point where uh, Mother Nature, uh, you know, reminding us as we have seen in COVID-19, that we, we must, uh, yes, we are the center of the universe. We created to, to enjoy those things, but we are supposed to be uh, uh, looking after stewards to all those things and, 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 and consider the value in animals and plants and air and water and everything else as important as, as we are. So I think I um, I think that's really what we have seen here in COVID nineteen in a way, uh, and it's interesting because uh, just close with this one, it's coming in in this season of autumn, and actually the, the season of autumn is the, is the time when uh, leaves are falling off, things are, uh, are getting. We, it is a time for us to sit back and revisit and revise our lives and getting ready to send our root deeper in winter. It's a time that when we have to send the root deep and replenish ourselves, getting ready for the spring uh, where life begins again. So this cycle of seasons reminds us that it is, it was tough and we didn't like many of them, but it was necessary at times for us to take a pause, to take a break and consider other things in our surrounding that are just as important for our survival, not just us individually and as human beings. With that, I would like to thank all of you. And of course, we will get back to you and we will continue this uh, series of uh, 
a free uh, webinar to share some of these ideas. And we, we are, we're looking forward to hear from you, um, you know, in a way of uh, feedback, because it will help us to improve what we are doing. Let me just cl uh, close with our karakia. Amen. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank and, you. Uh, I'm looking Thank forward you to continue um, getting back in touch with you. Malo Abito.